Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV18 earnings special. I am at the TCS boardroom. I am joined by the CEO and MD Rajesh Gopinathan and the HR head and executive vice president Ajoy Mukherjee. Uh, Rajesh, it's been a strong year for you. You had guided for a double digit growth. You've achieved it. You've ended the year with over 11% growth. Uh, are you confident you will be able to sustain this kind of growth in FY20? I don't want to comment about the future growth prospects, but uh, as you said, we have had a good year. Uh, and what is good about it is that both the strategy is working as well as the numbers are stacked up nicely. So we are entering uh, FI20 on a very strong wicket. And uh, we intend to participate aggressively in any opportunities that we see in front of us. Strong wicket, does that mean that um, you will be able to accelerate from here on? How do you define what strong wicket is? Because you don't have the kind of large deal wins that you enjoyed at the end of F518. Yeah, so if you compare uh, the entry into F519, we had a few large wins, as you rightly pointed out. And uh, we had a very dispersed uh, uh, performance graph with the BFSI, North America, retail, all of them being in low single digit kind of uh, growth uh, numbers. Whereas if you look at uh, when we are entering FI20, all these key segments are now closely bunched together, close to the company average. So there is no uh, lag, uh, and no headwind or no drag on the uh, growth side. So one, while the tailwind is not there, neither is the drag there. So I would think that it's an overall um, positive setup. And the exit numbers on a constant currency basis are almost a percentage point higher than what they were last year. So that also sets it up nicely. When we started F519, you said this is going to be the year of momentum and milestone. Uh, we've seen the momentum. In terms of milestone, you've hit double digit. What are you calling F520 at? Uh, of sustained performance. Okay, that's good to know. What about on margins? Are you confident of sustaining these current margins of 25.6%? I think there is structural stability to the margins. So many of the things that we keep talking about, the similar issues will continue. Uh, it is subject to currency. Uh, as we have always said, currency is an integral part of our business model. We have again, once again, announced uh, salary hikes. And uh, in markets like India, it is uh, close to 6%. So that differential has to get bridged by currency. Uh, otherwise, uh, investments continue. Uh, I would think that's part of the uh, business cycle. And unexpected volatility will have its own uh, intent. But structurally, the business is strong. Uh, we are nicely rotating into newer technologies. We are participating in growth and transformation of our customers. So each of them is, uh, you know, gives us the confidence on uh, the kind of numbers that we're targeting. Not commenting on any company, I'm not asking you to comment as well on any other, on you know the other company. But one of your peers and forces actually reported sharply lower margins this time around. And therefore, is there a structural risk to the IT services margins because they have been trending lower across the industry? The IT services industry per se does not have a single margin that it operates at. There is a fairly wide dispersion in margins, and uh, different companies have different strategies. So uh, as long as it's very difficult to comment about an industry margin because there is wide dispersion in strategies, wide dispersion in the way people set themselves up for it. Um, Ajay, uh, your last time, you will be missed uh, very sorely. FI19 was very strong in terms of the hiring that TCS did. Do you think FI20, given the strong demand environment that we're in, it will be as strong? From hiring perspective, yes, FI19 has been pretty strong. We, we did about 29,000 plus net hiring. And one good part is this hiring has been in all geographies and specifically in geographies outside India where we have been localizing and all the strategy that we had that has been playing out. So it's good, good hiring that we have done. And as far as next year is concerned, what I said in the press conference that holds that uh, all we announce is that the number of trainee offers that I have given and that I think we have talked about earlier as well that we have changed the way we hire our trainees. So there are still the engineering talent from all the colleges, but we have democratized the hiring. We have said that we have gone ahead with the TCS national qualifier test. 1,800 colleges across India participated into, uh, students from all these colleges, they participated. And after that, we have given out about 30,000 plus offers for trainees to come in and join us in the next financial year. And as you know, as we go into the financial year, 
based on our requirements maybe we can do an off campus hiring that what we did last year and something something like that so the overall hiring would of course depend upon the kind of business demand that we have the kind of requirements that we need and based on that we will do the rest of the hiring so that is all that i can tell you as far as the future is concerned any sectors where you see any kind of pressure there are, i mean individual uh, sectors have their own uh, issues retail is obviously a challenging sector continues to be bfsa as i said uh, it's a fairly it's a very large industry uh, the volatility that we're seeing in the markets is like and could have an impact on the capital markets uh, part of the bfsa industry uh, technology sector is a volatile sector it uh, moves very fast depending on uh, both demand as well as outlook on demand so in many ways these are now characteristics of these industries so there is not much to really call out uh, that's where the that's how these industries are and we are large enough that uh, we have to participate and uh, make our way through it all things um, do you think you know considering all things do you think bfsi growth can accelerate for you difficult to uh, say i would be happy if i were to end next year at 11.6 for the full year i'm, I'm very happy with that Of course, but do you think it's likely you may hit the double-digit mark, or just better than what you did in F519? I wouldn't like to comment on. As I said, the fun and numbers is when you talk about what has already happened. What about the macro uncertainties? What are your clients saying about the macro picture right now? Their budgets may be there, but are they holding back on the decision making or the spend? There is uh, some amount of that uh, coming through, but uh, if again, like I said in the press conference, if you look at UK, you know, in the most volatile and the most challenging of macros. we've been able to deliver 22% growth so there are obviously concerns everybody say, reads the same newspapers watches cnbc so uh, there are concerns but companies are also going forward and investing and executing some on a defensive basis some on an aggressive positive basis uh, the the challenge from a strategy perspective is to participate in each of them and that is where our uh, business for dot of framework is really helping us it is positioning us as a growth and transformation partner to customers in their own transformation agendas so do you think the spend uh, investment in digital will continue even if the macros worsen it's not a, I mean, unfortunately i can't give you a straight answer to such a question because it's not a single brush one uh, there are companies that are in industries that are doing badly but who are investing massively for digital transformation uh, so it is not a it's not a one trick uh, solution ajoy ha visa rejection rates gone up visa rejection rates for uh, in general it has gone up be it l visas or be it h h visas in both the places the visa rejection rates are up and that is because the scrutiny is much more and as a result what is happening is as long as you are looking at what you are doing and your applications are you are spending considerable amount of time in writing your applications then things are fine and therefore will it have an impact on the margins so visa rejection rates means uh, you have to fulfill the business demand now that means your talent strategy has to be there in order to meet those demands we have been hiring locally and we have been uh, looking at the digital side we have been also doing our work from different other geographies offshore and everything else so we'll have to we'll have to meet that and as far as our margins are concerned given the increments that we did last year same kind of scenario we have been able to deliver the margin so i think we'll we'll continue to do that raji just one final word we've seen a lot of consolidation in the sector or it's imminent your thoughts on it i don't uh, particularly i think uh, the sector is fairly uh, dominated by large players and what we've seen globally is that uh, it is uh, you know the kind of investments required in talent transformation in training in building domain knowledge context knowledge um, it actually the larger clients prefer larger vendor groups so there is a general propensity for the demand to migrate towards larger entities i think that uh, that has been going on uh, the market share gains have always been accruing to the larger players probably that is going to continue into the foreseeable future and is demand stronger than it was when we spoke in january our tcb is stronger uh, overall environment is more complex but i think it is a more, it's a better environment today than where we were uh, not from january to but last year to this year kind of a, a scenario 
to demand environment better today than it was same time last year. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time and speaking to CNBC TV 18. A joy. It was a pleasure interacting with you over the last many, many quarters. Thank you, Thank you and all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you very much.